गाइस फॉलो मी ऑन इंस्टाग्राम टू नेवर एवर मिस एनी ऑफ माय क्रेजी अपडेट्स हाय गाइस एंड वेलकम टू अनदर व्लॉग आई एम ड्राइविंग दिस दिस इज द जगुआर एफ पेस इट इज द पी फोर हंड्रेड ई प्लग इन हाइब्रिड मॉडल एंड यू कैन सी द की ऑफ द व्हीकल दिस टू अनलॉक द कार दिस टू लॉक द कार दिस टू ओपन द बूट ऑफ द व्हीकल दिस टू टर्न ऑन द लाइट एंड दिस इज फॉर द हैजर्ड लाइट वेल इट हैज सम क्रोम ट्रीटमेंट ऑन इट व्हिच काइंड ऑफ लुक्स नाइस स्ट्रेट अवे वी आर गोइंग टू बी ओपनिंग द इंजन बे एंड देयर इट इज इट सेज Jaguar Ingenium on this plastic engine cover. There is insulation there. Battery placement here, and the engine bay has some amount of space for a bigger engine. Of course, you get hydraulic struts. I don't know if I said that before or not. Anyways, let's just shut this and let me tell you that the facelifted model definitely looks better. This is the Jaguar logo above which you get a camera. Our dynamic is the trim. Grill looks really very nice, and here you get pixel LED headlights, which are beautiful because they are very powerful and. J Blade DRLs. There is a headlight washer as well. Here you can see this is open and functional because the radiator is right behind, and you get front parking sensors. This is the towing hook, and there is a air curtain which is very much functional. Coming to the other side, this is not open. This is kind of fake, so it's closed, so no air passes through this. But yeah, that air curtain is very much functional there. Again, the J Shape DRLs actually become the dynamic swipe indicators here, which is fantastic. so you have got this gloss black finishing here on the bumper but this car has got self park that's the reason you have got the sensors for the same right here on the side in fact the jago logo is inside the headlight that is the level of attention to detail coming to the side of the car you can see it looks similar to how it used to look before but why is the window open so that i can show you the way they actually put this sort of a velvet for insulation sound insulation that is very much beautiful in fact they do it all across here yeah it has got this velvet sort of a treatment for better insulation which is kind of cool let's just shut this let's look at the wheels of the car these tires actually are decently wide because at 265 45 21 they are big okay they are really big and alloy wheel design is for a change actually nice looking which is not the case with jaguar land rover in india though and there you see adaptive dampers for the suspension jaguar logo there and fake stuff happening here god knows why you got a camera right there in fact it projects the jaguar logo from here at night request sensor is there on all the doors and these roof rails are actually functional they can take up to 75 kg of weight so here is where the fuel actually goes coming to the rear of the car again revised lights which look quite nice beautiful actually and it says p400e all wheel drive 400 stands for the horsepower there is a camera here with a spray which comes to clean the camera of course the jago logo the rear wiper looks kind of nice there is a high mounted stop lamp a roof spoiler shark fin antenna there and it has a very beautiful stance in fact okay they have given this gloss black finishing here you got rear parking sensors this is the towing hook of the vehicle facel comes fingers of truth hunting for the exhaust which happens to be here and on the other side as well dual exhaust for a four cylinder not bad jaguar and you know what it has this wide sitting stance from the rear which looks beautiful i love the way the dynamic swipe indicators are fantastic lovely in fact this also kind of juts out here is where you charge the vehicle because this is a plug in hybrid it's not going to open now because the car is on of course so details given for the charging bit yeah so both sides you have this is for the charging that side is for the fuel it's petrol of course and here i press a button there opens the boot or does it no yeah now it does so power tailgate for the win all my luggage is stuffed inside but there's a bit of a problem the boot is smaller than before because the battery is right below here occupying a lot of space so charging cables home charger all that is in the boot right now you can see this yeah on the other side let's just open this nice bag there you see the charging plugs and all that kept in the boot which it's more into the boot carrying capacity honestly now the boot has this 12 volt charging socket here and yeah there's some hook here some storage there in fact below this there's some storage space as well so we just going to flip this upwards you know what this is the tire inflator because it does not get a spare wheel there is no space for a spare wheel unfortunately okay there's a light here inside let's do one thing let's close the boot power tailgate i press a button and there it shuts okay it's a bit slow i have to admit and there okay yeah it doesn't get a spare wheel now let's get to the rear seat because i'm not really very happy with the rear seat okay look at the doors they feel really very heavy you get this beautiful white stitching it says meridian here obviously meridian sound system door pockets are big enough beautiful leather finishing and all actually quite nice and ac vent here 
in the center almost everywhere so you can recline the seat in 60 40 format but the seat recline angle is fixed i mean you can drop the seat to increase the boot carrying capacity but the angle of the seat is fixed you can't change that isofix child seat mount everybody gets a head which is good okay now you can see leg room and knee room is actually good okay little bit scooped out there's a magazine holder here but under thigh support is not that great and headroom seems to be adequate for someone as tall as me you get a light placement here on the top you get a handle to hold on to you get a hook but no height adjustable seat belt says airbag here says airbag here as well this is for the coat hook of course and this is for the microphone so yeah it has also got active noise cancellation wherein it plays low frequency sounds in reverse to cancel out those sounds okay you've got four zone climate control air conditioning you've got heating function for the rear seats yeah you just have to press it inside to do that so yeah this is the control for the rear ac four zone huh? that's kind of nice here you get a 12 volt charging socket but this is a dummy panel there's a sort of a hump here so there's no legroom for the center passenger poor center passenger might as well just put this down twin cup holders here and you get an adjustable headrest as well so i would say this is best for four people and easy to adjust the headrest oh my god it's not that easy as much as i thought anyways nice stitching very comfortable seats quite impressed by that window area is not that big but thankfully it gets a massive roof yeah this massive glass roof is a moon roof this does not open jaguar is probably the only company in the world which gives you a roof which does not open so that's a different level of cost cutting you can see the dashboard which is more or less the same as before but what has really changed here is the fact that you get a bigger screen which is very much handy okay let's get outside so ground clearance seems ample enough and there yeah shuts very smoothly actually i'm happy they have given request sensor everywhere you got indicator here on the outside rear view mirror as well and there you can see this is the sensor this is the light which actually brings for the blind spot monitor yes if you see it has got multiple cameras and all that tech because obviously it has got adas and here the wiper does not come up so it's going to struggle in india and the wiper quality is actually nice it has got fog lights which are placed so lower down and you won't believe it this car actually does a bugatti type on and off for the lights so the lights do this whole function of turning on one by one and when you turn off the lights again it does it one by one so it's sort of a dance but not as audi like but still good enough let me show you the underbody as well since we are here there you see okay yes a khula vacuum hai i have no idea they're trying to conceal stuff for better arrows okay door feels heavy it has got 12 way adjust for the driver seat electric adjust of course and you've got three settings as well i mean you can save up to three people settings two it says meridian here this is to lock and unlock the vehicle nice touch sort of a control haptic controls huh? for the child lock which also locks the door and the windows at the rear and obviously this is for the outer rear view mirror adjustment and these are the controls for the power windows right beautiful white stitching door pockets are actually big enough and little bit hard plastics not that bad as such this is to open the boot of the vehicle this is to open the fuel lid fuel lid should have opened if i just pushed it that's kind of a bummer this is for the headlight leveling let me press this one button and as soon as i do that you can see the seat is actually moving it's coming to my position memory is both for the steering as well as for the seat seat quality is fantastic you can see the under thigh support is also expanding yeah so that under thigh support is never an issue this is the lever to adjust the steering wheel okay yeah i think this is what heated function for the steering wheel probably yes i don't know it should be on the steering wheel yeah heating function is here there's a button which i don't really understand okay you can decide auto you want to keep it in manual position i think that is the thing that is here is the jag logo on the headrest which is adjustable and beautiful graphics as well seats are really comfortable look at the bolstering it's nice look at that massive roof as well let's get inside thankfully there is a proper dead pedal but you know what the design is such now this hits the center console and talking about the secret storage space there is one right there which happens to be below the center console quite nice okay here we are first things first let me shut the indicator let me shut the light as well so yeah lights off now the thing is that the glove box is lockable it is decent sized but you know what it also has a strap doesn't get the cooling function though it's a pen holder here as well nice white stitching double stitching actually and continuous ac vent treatment which is so audi and urtica like in fact it even says airbag there says airbag here so this car has got i think six airbags for sure there's a sunglass holder right there in fact you can see there's a light mirror this obviously comes out the finishing on the roof liner and here is just fantastic just look at it all throughout they've done this premium finishing there's a microphone here there's a microphone there there's a handle to hold on to even the driver gets a handle to hold on to here you get a mirror along with a light as well steering has this beautiful leather stitching 
absolutely good to hold says are here on the steering wheel in fact this is a fingerprint magnet okay this gloss black which they have done almost multiple places now fingerprint magnet for sure without a doubt the paddles are like huge just look at the size of these paddles very big huh and you know what it gets automatic wipers it gets automatic headlights as well that is a 12.3 inch screen in order to browse through this it's very easy okay here we go yeah i can just decide what i want to see and then i can just browse through it it's a little cumbersome it's a very slow system as well so i can decide what do i want in the left info panel so i was like media anyways we should probably put off and let's see what comes there let's get out of this system there you can see the car itself and you get the map on the right side you can change and customize everything that's a tachometer with a speedometer and all the various information you would require what i'm going to do is i'm going to change this layout to the dual one and then i'm going to change it back again when we are driving the car there you go now this is very similar to what you have seen in earlier jaguar land rover cars 12.3 inch screen 11.4 inch screen this is known as the pv pro hd curved display yeah it's a bit curved it's fantastic it's really nice and slick and very fast as well and you've got plenty of information it's telling me my driving style is 100 percent awesome mileage is 5.4 mpg if you understand that please leave it in the comments below by writing what is it in terms of kilometers whatever i'm driving what is the energy impact it gives me so much information now that i kind of get bored and then obviously navigation is awesome the quality of the screen is really very nice it's got apple carplay it's got android auto connectivity and both of them actually work wirelessly too so here we got eco data which i was showing you energy impact driving style eco tips and all that are pakka gyo reyo okay now it has got park assist which works decently well there's an ev mode or rather ev display which shows you how the whole system is working including how it's working for the batteries as well so it's 3% charge at the moment once it finishes it becomes completely green vehicle preconditioning is also there so usual bits and then dynamic i i'll use when i'm driving the car which basically shows you like g force meter lap timer stopwatch as well and then you can set up the car in terms of how you want the various things to work so yeah it's actually a very nice system but it's a little complex to understand it's not the best it gets a meridian sound system let's listen to some audio right away audio quality is actually nice and thankfully you get a physical control this is also to turn on and off this particular system now this thing actually pulsates red at night so this is the engine start button this is the small chill to gear lever and if you press it inside it gets into auto mode otherwise you can browse through the various modes like this you can see that all that is changing at the moment the only problem is you can't really see what's written here so i have to just show you like this so that's not illuminated properly this is i think for uh, cruise control at lower speed which is known as all terrain progress control yeah this is all terrain progress control then there's a pure ev mode this is to turn off traction control as it dikh nahi raha i don't understand why it's not seen in the day there's a wireless charging pad here it says jaguar coventry 1935 proudly ha huh? that text is written right there now to turn on the air conditioning very easy i can just turn it on i told you it's four zone climate control air conditioning here i can increase or decrease the temperature if i pull it outwards i can decrease or increase the fan speed okay and if i push it inside yeah like that i can decide if i want cooling or i want heating function for the seat can you see that yeah heating and cooling function of the seat can be activated like that same here as well so both ways it works and it's a nice system a lot of things in this car are actually optional so why is it not turning on there it is turning on let me just pull it and get out of it and these are the controls for the air conditioning system okay easy to use sort of touch and all that stuff uh, okay saying activate low traction launch because i've actually selected rain ice no mode so you're going to get out of that i'm just going to get into the regular mode i'm just going to before we turn off the air conditioning you can see it's on here or not i don't know i cannot see it but if you can let me know how does that look okay let's just shut this let's turn off the air conditioning which means pull it outward and shut it as well now this is storage space here twin cup holders there is a 12 volt charging socket and some storage right there in fact it has got a dedicated slot for the key the key slots right in here that's kind of nice so it doesn't move and make noises this does not oh this does slide ahead which is kind of nice here you get a 12 volt charging socket a regular usb a usb c as well and some storage space here which is beautifully lined too now the thing is i'm just going to sh shut this sun blind let it shut and then we're going to open it back again auto dimming mirror light is very easy to use like it's a touch light i can just touch it and there are buttons i think this is for connected car it has got sos and stuff like that now this has opened so we are just going to i mean this is close so we are going to open it it opens really nice and wide but you know only the sun blind the glass is big actually but this glass does not open i still don't understand the logic of not having an opening glass like that's next level cost cutting honestly the horn the horn is actually nice okay so let's do one thing let's use the wipers right away and there you can see plenty of spray on offer 
I think the headlight washers also work. No, the lights are off, so it should not be working. Let's get into reverse because the cameras are also quite cool. So here we are into reverse. Now the thing is that the camera view is on when you're driving the car at lower speed, below 10 kilometers per hour. You can see this camera view as well. And then it has got a 360 degree view for the camera. So I can just keep changing it like that. It's a beautiful camera, very high resolution. And then it's amazing because it's very helpful. You can see a 3D view, a bird's eye view and all that. But it has got exhaust here in the demo, but it doesn't have real exhaust on the outside. It has just got fake exhaust. So let me just turn it. So this is something which you have seen in a lot of other Jaguar Land Rover cars. I've seen it in the Defender. I really loved it in the Defender. You can browse through like this. Very cool. 360 degree camera. Who doesn't like a 360 degree camera? And then I can change the views. I can actually browse through. Okay, can I? No, 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 I cannot do it. It's showing me these guidelines, which is again amazing. Where's the handbrake? I can't find the handbrake. The handbrake is not there in this car. It is vanished. It's guy up. It's gone. It's not there. Trust me on this. Okay. Because then I have to just put it in park to get it to park and I can't find the handbrake as such. But I have to get into reverse again because we are going to be using the rear wipers, which means that there. You can see the spray is happening on the rear wiper to clean the rear camera. Sorry, rear camera. What am I saying? Okay. Here you can see the rear wiper functioning. Oh my god, the spray is fantastic. In fact, there's so much spray now. It is there on the glass on the top. I'm not sure if you can see it. So let me do one thing. Let me turn off the car. As soon as I turn off the car, this obviously like goes nicely. It's saying software update is there. I don't want to do software update. The mirrors also change the position. And then as soon as I exit this nice, beautiful sort of a display and the Jaguar logo as well. Now I'm going to turn on the car. And here, yeah, there is no drama as such. It's just like has a different type of a thingy happening there. Now, I've not shown you the heads up display. There is the heads up display. You can see it is blinking right now. So it shows me the speedometer. It also shows me, you know, lane keep assist. It also shows me to put my hand on the steering wheel when I leave it while doing lane keep assist. It also shows me audio if I'm playing a track, next audio, previous song and all that. So yeah, it is nice, the heads up display, but it is optional. And there you can see tweeters right there. Okay, seat is actually moving behind when I unlock the car. So a lot of attention to detail, which is quite impressive. I have left the key here. So I'm just going to take it for the moment. And I'm just going to shut the car. Before that, I saw another thing actually. So we are on the other zone of the camera. There, some amount of data is given right here. It also tells you that it has airbags. So be careful of airbags because airbags are not safe. If you do not, I mean, you can get hurt with an airbag. So let's lock the car. There, it locks mirrors go inside, obviously. And then I'm going to unlock the car. I'm going to keep all the buttons pressed. If you notice, the rear window is actually tinted. So there, all the, this thing, uh, like windows rolled down. But this does not go all the way down, which is a bit of a bummer. And then you can see the insulation is there as well. Seats look really comfy. Let me lock the car here. And let me put all the windows up and there the windows roll up. The sun blind is also closing. So you can't see that from here. Anyways, it's time we start driving because with the hybrid, it obviously drives much better than the regular petrol model. But for me, a diesel is a diesel is a diesel. Let's go. All right, we're all set to go, which means turning on the car. And it is on very silently. It's asking me for a software update. I don't want to do any software update at the moment. And we are actually going to get into this menu because we are going to get into dynamic eye. And here, everything is in dynamic mode, actually. So the thing is, I want to get the G-Force meter on, which is on right now. We are going to turn on. Actually, we are going to be in comfort mode only. I get into drive and off we go very smoothly. Handbrake is down, air conditioning is off, traction control is on though. And here you can feel the stiffness because obviously European setup of cars is always on the stiffer side. So yes, this feels quite stiff as such. You know what? Land Rover already makes SUVs. So what is the point of Jaguar making an SUV? Well, this is sort of a crossover and then Jaguar is making sportier SUVs. So this is definitely on the sportier side. So suspension is on the stiffer side and low speed. You can feel that stiffness so that firmness can be felt. But as speeds increase, you know, the overall ride improves dramatically. Now, this has got all wheel drive capability. Earlier, they used to offer two wheel drive as well. But now they only offer all wheel drive in this car because that's the focus that this can go anywhere. So yes, prices have been revised accordingly. So let me quickly bring you to the Indian market wherein we have two variants right now. Earlier, the diesel was discontinued. Now the diesel is back with the D200, which is priced as rupees 93 lakhs on road Mumbai. Then there is the P250, which is available in India, which is priced at rupees 91 lakhs on road Mumbai. Actually, both the ex showroom prices are the same around 70 lakhs, but then taxation is slightly different between petrol and diesel. That's the reason why the price differs. I'm talking about on road pricing, of course. In terms of price, it's actually competing with the 
the X5 and uh, the GLE but uh, you know the pricing is on the high side in india and you do not get mild hybrid tech forget getting the plug-in hybrid this is the plug-in hybrid variant which definitely has a usp of being more frugal because of the battery tech which actually powers the front wheels so yes the 17.1 kilowatt hour battery powers the front wheels it produces 143 horsepower and 240 newton meters of torque and it is mated to this p300 engine which as you know is a two cylinder four sorry it is a two liter four cylinder engine and let me actually up the pace because that's where it feels so much better and you can feel the dramatic improvement in the ride it gets a bit bouncy yeah obviously it does and onto the throttle oh my god the pull is so nice and strong the surprising factor of this engine is now that even when you let go of the throttle it is still pulling ahead so two liter four cylinder engine but before we get into that let's quickly stop here for a second and let me change the drive modes so we are going to get into dynamic mode yeah there are four drive modes actually there's snow and ice and there's eco there's dynamic there's comfort and we are actually going to turn off the traction control left foot on the brake right foot on the throttle revving the motor revs hardly till 1500 rpm and off we go upshifts around 6000 rpm so you know what is the best thing about this engine it has this sportier setup wherein once you lift off the throttle and thanks to electric assist it's still pulling ahead yeah so you have to be on the brakes very fast you can see that it's a bit all over the place at the moment yeah because this road is full over covered as such anyways engine performs nicely because you know this p300 engine is so good it's used in the f-type as well so 300 horsepower and 400 newton meters of torque the combined output actually turns out to be 404 ps of power 404 ps is quite a bit of power and the torque is 640 newton meters that's again quite a bit resulting in this car going from 0 to 100 kilometers per hour in 5.3 seconds for a car which weighs 2100 kgs this is quite fast you know why it weighs heavy because of the battery which increases the weight of this car by quite a bit and i kind of feel all over the place anyways let me do one thing let me get into the main road here off we go yeah it has got it as tech like lane keep assist and all that that's the reason that uh, it makes this sound and all that stuff now the steering is actually light at low speeds weighs up quite well at high speed so it's very fluid and fun a car to drive in fact I'm saying that it is surprising considering the weight which you know, ensures there's a lot of body roll because of the weight 2100 kg is quite a bit of weight and that weight also you know kind of affects the handling of this car so it's not very dynamic because there's considerable body roll you know it is a bit heavy and you feel that heaviness around the corners in the streets not so much but around the corners you do feel that heaviness now the thing is that this battery powers the front wheels the engine for the most part powers the rear wheels but the electric motor can only power the front wheels and that is fine what is not fine is that pure electric range is only 53 kilometers not 53 kilometers seems quite a bit but you know what it snaps like this i charged it yesterday the battery is already on zero percent i can get into pure ev mode by pressing a button here but obviously battery is drained right now so that's not going to happen but with plug-in hybrid you have to charge it and the charging is also quite expensive in europe right now because of the energy crisis you can see the steering is quite fluid and nice engine is always very refined in fact it works on battery power for the most part especially at lower speeds the engine really kicks in when you know you want more punch and more oomph and it redlines around six and a half thousand rpm onto the throttle a bit of a lag from this turbocharged engine you know that lag is not there when the battery is there active because it has instant torque so that improves the low end grunt of this car the plug-in hybrid nature in fact it can work only on pure ev mode till 140 kilometers per hour that's quite a bit huh it can charge from 0 to 80 percent of the battery in just 30 minutes that's also fast enough but then battery pack is also small now 17.1 kilowatt hour is what nothing at all to be honest onto the throttle yeah it also puts back some energy into the battery while braking so that regeneration also happens but you know you can call it plug-in hybrid but it's actually very mild the way this battery is able to last for long duration because in hardly 100 miles 160 kilometers it's gone but it does help in boosting the fuel efficiency of the vehicle so the real world fuel efficiency should be around 14 to 15 kilometers per liter i think jaguar claims that this will return somewhere around 45 kilometers per liter yeah it does in my dreams uh, i don't know how they calculate that but yeah that's not gonna happen beautiful nice twisty around here you know i was driving the f-type earlier so i can definitely feel a lot of body roll in this car right now you've got paddle shifters so you can manually take control of things and will it hold on to a gear 
no it will not hold on to again let me do one thing no you cannot slot it anywhere either so that's another bummer there's no triptronic function you have got paddle shifters but you know they just doesn't let you hold on to a gear it's quite fluid around the corners grip levels are nice and it's very sure footed a car it's not a car you would like to push around corners especially because of the battery's additional weight now it robs away that dynamic feel which the f pace has and in india you usually do not see many of the f paces because at that budget people who walk into a jaguar land rover showroom thinking that okay let me buy the f pace end up with the velar or probably with the range rover sport and nobody is even buying the evoque these days because the design is so similar to the velar so they have re- like robbed that identity from the car braking performance is fine actually because of the weight again that nose dive is there in spite of the fact that it's on the stiffer side that slight nose dive is there because of the heavy weight of the car this car is a heavy weight it's a heavy lifter i do not feel it while driving in the streets around the corners i can feel that weight for sure and that is a bit of a bummer come on downshift a speed gearbox is a torque converter unit it's honestly not very fast with shifts it takes its own sweet time at times and it will not respond when you want it and feels a little bit jerky when you get a little bit aggressive with the throttle so in the city because the battery assist is happening most of the times you don't feel anything the level of refinement is unbelievable okay it is just so smooth and gets the job done but when they have a diesel why would i get a plug in hybrid it makes no sense to me at all okay i will get the powerful diesel engine i know 404 horsepower sounds quite a lot because honestly it is but i'm not getting those 404 horsepower na i have to keep charging the battery because it's not a self charging hybrid a self charging hybrid is a better solution honestly because every time you have to go and charge and then because electric cars are being adopted quite aggressively nowadays there are people at the charging station almost all the time so yesterday when i went to charge this car there was a porsche taycan standing right there now it's got all the adas functions which you would expect so that you can see that it has got this blind spot monitor it has got lane keep assist which works very well huh, somehow then it has got forward collision warning it has got automatic emergency braking rear cross traffic alert so most of it is actually optional in fact that heads up display which you see that is optional so yeah jaguar land rover ends up making lot of stuff optional in the car and here let's downshift it actually does sound nice ha huh? it's a car which doesn't sound bad at all considering that the whine from the electric motor can be felt the only thing is that the combined range is quite good because petrol engine is not the most efficient but the electric motor is i'm not understanding why companies like jaguar land rover are not looking at doing something like a strong hybrid that would be fantastic just imagine that uh, you know the engine is only powering the battery and then the battery is powering the wheels the thing i'm not done till now is blow the horn so listen to this horn is okay okay actually nobody blows the horn i'm the only rare person here blowing the horn but a horn is very useless in this country right now so that doesn't really matter but in india the horn is the biggest safety feature more important than anti lock brakes as well now they have got torque vectoring by braking and all that so which is going to come to a halt here on the left side and there you can see brakes are good okay and off we go so basically all the modes now there are four of them actually they alter the engine the steering the gearbox and the suspension those are the four parameters which they actually alter and then i have come to the uh, different mode for the instrument cluster it's a very nice car actually the fps is very underrated but it doesn't sell for a particular reason that is land rover having better options at the same price range and that is something which jaguar land rover really needs to look into because they are offering similar cars because engines are obviously similar at similar price ranges so why would someone opt for the underdog that is a bit of a problem so guys this is my vlog of the jaguar f pace this is the plug in hybrid a very nice sporty car but because of the battery weight it is on the heavier side it is better to buy the diesel version for sure quite frugal as well and on that bombshell it's time to end thank you so much for watching if you like this vlog make sure to give it a thumbs up that's the like button and also subscribe to the channel i will see you guys in the next video real soon bye bye